Oh, hi, hello, welcome to this new video. Time to grab your favorite drink or snacks. Oh, I love snacks. Today I'll begin reading this book from Cheyenne, which I'm sure you know. And she is this special illustrator. The book is written by her boy, Connor, and illustrated by her. And she makes some comments as well. And actually, before that, I'm heading over to the art supply store because I feel like trying something new today. And here we are back home. I'm ready to show you what I got. The famous Palomino pencils. They're so cool, aren't they? These two are the most common ones. The black is the regular black wing, more or less a 4B grade, and the white is called pearl, pretty much a 3B. Going down the scale to the hardest graphite, there's also the 602, like a 2B, and the natural one, close to an HB lead. Compared to regular pencils, these are more creamy, I'd say, <laughs> smoother. They really glide through the paper, but they also smudge a lot. Since we're here, I'm gonna show you my favorite pencil sharpeners. This is a really, really cheap one, but I love it so much because of these gradations. You can choose by the numbers to sharpen the wood less or more, which is really cool because when you buy expensive pencils, you don't really wanna waste them. But before I found that one, I used to use this one here. I've seen people calling it cum, 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 k-u-m, so I don't really know how to say it. It works in this two-step process when at first it only sharpens the wood, then you put it in the second position and then sharpen only the graphite. So if you like long points to expose more the graphite, this is the one for you. One good thing about both these sharpeners is that they're super safe. Once they hit the point where they sharpen the most that they can, they just stop. And they never break the tip, which is perfect. So when I was at the store, there was this lovely lady that saw I was interested in these pencils and then she came and asked me if I actually knew the story behind them and why they were really back in stock now. I said, no, I don't really know the story, but now you're gonna have to tell me. <laughs> okay, I don't think I said that. But she was kind enough to tell me the story anyways. <laughs> and I'm here to share it with you because I thought it was really cool. And of course, I went to Google the whole thing later on. I mean, it's really hard not to buy something that you have on your hands when the person adds meaning to it. And I totally realized if you feel like buying pencils after this video, you can totally blame me. I'll, I'll accept that. So story time. There was this family and two people in the family decided to go on the pencil making manufacturing business. One of them apparently was not afraid of risking fun-looking shaped pencils and created the Palomino brand. The other one uh, went with a more normal-looking pencil, and it was nothing less than the Faber-Castell brand. Yep, they both came from the same family. Now imagine going to kindergarten or going to school and then there was a pretty good chance that all your classmates would be holding a pencil made from your uncle. And then you'd be like, uh-huh, that one you're holding, my uncle makes it, and he has a castle. And it's huge, and I get to go there whenever I'm bored. Huh. Okay, what am I doing? I just made myself really jealous. 
Okay, leaving aside the story that I created in my brain and going back to the real one, the Palomino brand started releasing their pencils on the 30s, which means right before the Second World War and during the Great Depression, which means, well, not the greatest timing for market exploration, but well, because the pencils looked so unusual, and of course because of its quality, people start picking them up out of curiosity and uh, they actually really liked it. We're talking about famous writers, artists, animators and composers like Stravinsky, the famous composer, and Chuck Jones, the animator for Looney Tunes. But unfortunately, they never really sold a lot of pencils because, well, there were cheaper ones and there wasn't really a need for crazy good-looking pencils that worked pretty much like any other in the grand scheme of things. And it wasn't really a great time in history, people were not really shiny and happy and looking out for cute pencils to add to their collection, so... Yeah, a hard time for stationary hoarders like us. So, there was a machine that made the ferrules, the little metal part that goes on top of the pencil and holds the eraser. That machine broke, and pretty much they didn't bother repairing it. Because of the overall business situation and because the economy wasn't really that stable for them to try new things and see how it turns out to be, they literally just abandoned the business. What happened is that people who really loved and enjoyed them went out stockpiling the ones that they could found around, like squirrels, and that was it. Fast forward a few decades later, the internet was invented. Yep, this beautiful place. Uh, okay, not always. But for this specific story, it was a beautiful thing. Because, check this out, blogs and forums started popping out here and there. And people started sharing their stories and their memories of the great times of the Palomino pencils. And remember, this was a time when there was no YouTube or any cat videos. <laughs> so... I bet the cutest corner on the internet was a pencil fan club. And like any club, people started gathering up and talking about the pencils that they still had. And some were willing to buy them for like, as much as $40. Yep, that's crazy, huh? So naturally, this created enough momentum for a company to see all that fuss and have the idea of bringing back the Palomino brand to life. So they did all the paperwork to continue with the same brand, the same look, plus they did like new collections, colors, collaborations, all that good stuff. And this is the story on how these pencils came back to life. But it didn't stop there, there's also this very cute side of it all. Since it's a product used by so many artists, there is this non-profit called Blackwing Foundation that funds arts and music education for kids. So a portion of the sales go to helping people out as well. Oh, isn't that great? For the second part of the video, I'm gonna be packing this sticker bundle that I prepped for a giveaway I hosted on Instagram. These are products from my shop. I recently opened it and I'm very excited. I'm so happy to brainstorm ideas and come up with colors and moods for the next things coming up. So I decided to do this giveaway because Christmas season was arriving and... Living abroad, I don't really have the big family reunion anymore. Something that I grew up with and I longed for. <laughs> All those cousins, card games, weird questions that bring up identity crisis and awkward moments, so you know. So even though I won't have that, I thought I could do a little something to surprise someone else with a little Christmas gift. And it made me very, very happy. I just love the idea of getting mail and, of course, having new stationary bits to use around. 
So I hope they like it. I hope you all had a great holiday time and beginning of the year. Overall, it's nice to have a fresh start within yourself, not only in January. So if it wasn't that crazy good, let's trust 2020 and trust ourselves because there's always so much room to grow and learn. So that's it for today's video. I hope you stick around for the next ones. And uh, yep, go buy some Palomino pencils. <laughs> At least I'm not giving you any subliminal messages. I'm like straight up with my intentions. It's cause they're nice. I want you to have a nice experience. So you see, I'm a really good friend. But okay, okay, I'm gonna stop talking now. <laughs> Bye.